Hey there, welcome back to another video. We'll be doing a past paper over here. I'm doing a past paper from Berlue College in South Africa. It's the July grade 12 paper one, which is all around about algebra. So we'll take this into account for the matrix doing their prelims. We'll start with the first question A, as you can see up top. On the left hand side we've got x squared minus 4x is equal to 12. What do we do? We move all the terms to one side and we make the sum equal to 0. What do we now? We have x squared minus 4x minus 12. So we have x minus 6 and x plus 2. We got this from doing the cross method. We put x and x because that's the value on the left hand side where we have x squared. We need to get a value of minus 4x, so we take the values of 12 that are factors. We use 6 and 2, we say x minus 6 and x plus 2, because when you multiply x and 2 together, you get 2x and x and 6 together, you get 6x. You have minus 6 plus 2, you get the following answer. We then say x minus 6 in brackets, x plus 2 in brackets equal to naught. We have x is equal to 6 or x is equal to minus 2. Let's do question 2 now. As you can see, I've written it below. What do we need to do? We need to multiply both sides by the denominators to ensure that everything comes up to the top. So we've got x plus 1 and x minus 2 as our denominators. So let's multiply the first term, which is x plus 2, by both of those values, x plus 1 and x minus 2. Don't forget that you leave the x plus 1 on the denominator position. And as I'm sure you can see, the x plus 1 will cancel the x plus 1 above. We do the same for the minus 3. And uh, we say x plus 1 and x minus 2 in brackets. All of that over x minus 2. We say that's equal to 1. So we say x plus 1 times x minus 2 times by 1 over x plus 1. What is our next step? We need to cancel. Canceling our brackets and our like terms, we'll get something like this. We cancel the x plus 1, cancel the x plus 1, x minus 2 and x minus 2. This would leave you with x plus 2 at the top times x minus 2 for the first. Then you have minus 3 times x plus 1. These are the terms that are left over. We say that's equal to x minus 2. There we go. What we need to do next is we need to multiply all these values out. This gives you x squared minus 2x plus 2x. Minus 4 minus 3x minus 3 is equal to x minus 2. Group your like terms. Cancel them out and add them and subtract them together. Minus 2x and plus 2x will cancel. That will leave you with a 0x on the left there. So you've got x squared. Minus 4 minus 3 gives minus 7, and you're left with a minus 3x. We bring the x across, that would be a minus x now, so you have minus 4x. Then you bring the minus 2 across, it becomes plus 2, so minus 4 minus 3 would be minus 7, plus 2 would be minus 5. We write there minus 5 is equal to 0, and we then need to factorize. We do the cross method again. Factors of 5 equal 5 and 1. To get to 4, we have to use a minus 5, and there we go. Easy game. I'm going quickly through these. If you need to slow down, please do. Pause the video at any time. Otherwise, visit thinkbrainwave.com for all videos, notes, and tests. Right, let's do question 3. We have x over 2, so the power of 2. Minus 2x less than or equal to minus 3. This is an inequality. We need to level everything off so let's multiply the first side or the left hand side by four and we do the same to the left as we do to the right and we're left with x squared minus 8x plus 12. we then have on the left hand on the right hand side zero times four which is still zero we do the cross method we have x x and i would say six and two because those are the factors of 12 that would give you eight we have minus 6 and minus 2. There we go, x minus 6 and x minus 2. 
is less than or equal to zero. This gives us values of x being less than or equal to positive 6. Remember that the less than and equal sign only changes when you have, divide, have to divide both sides by a negative or multiply both sides by a negative. Right, so we have x is less than or equal to 6 or x is less than or equal to 2. All right, so let's do the next question, question B. We start off by writing down the function, the function of x when x is cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 6. All right, 6 would def definitely be the y-intercept. Okay, so we'll, we've seen over here that when you have the co coordinates of x being 1 and the coordinates of x being minus 2, the y-coordinates will both be equal to 0. So we're going to write that down. And there we have it. So now we solve for the function when x is equal to 1. We say x would be 1 cubed plus a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus 6. We're then left with 1 plus a plus b plus 6. And this gives us 7 plus a plus b is equal to 0. How do we know that? Well, as you look at the step above, we see the function of 1 and the function of minus 2 is equal to 0. So now we want to solve for a. We say a is equal to minus b minus 7. All right, so we've got our first equation. Let's move to our next one. We now say when the function has the value of x is equal to minus 2, we sub minus 2 into the original equation like you can see at the top there. So we'll say x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c, we sub in the minus 2. We have minus 2 cubed in brackets. Make sure to remember those brackets always. We say plus a over brackets minus 2 squared plus b times minus 2 plus 6. Okay, so let's move forward. We say that the function when it's minus x is minus 2 is equal to 0, and we said this with the function and x is equal to 1 is equal to 1, it's also equal to 0. So therefore we put the 0 on the left-hand side, we then solve for the right-hand side, minus 2 cubed is minus 8, so we have minus 2 squared, which is 4, and naturally the minus 2 and b makes minus 2b, plus the 6. So what do we do now? We sub in our first equation, which is a is equal to minus b, minus 7. So wherever we see an a, we must sub in within brackets a minus b and a minus 7. So as you can see, you've got plus 4a. Where you see that a, instead of putting an a, replace it with the brackets, put minus b minus 7, close the brackets, and you've got minus 2b plus 6 on the right of that and a minus 8 on the left of it. So let's move forward. Let's do the substitution. We say 0 is equal to Nothing happens to the 8, so we say minus 8, put the plus 4, open your brackets, minus b, minus 7, close your brackets, you've got minus 2b, sorry, I just want to make sure that that looks smart, you have minus 2b plus 6, we then multiply the 4 into the brackets, we have minus 8, minus 4 times b, or 4 times minus b, which is minus 4b, positive 4 times minus 7 is minus 28, you have minus 2b and a 6. Let's group our terms together. We have minus 8, minus 28, and plus 6. So that gives us minus 36, plus the 6 makes minus 30. You then have minus 4b, minus 2b, which is minus 6b. So we put them on the other side, we change the sign, it becomes a plus 6b. So therefore, the next step, what do we do? Think about it, it's algebra. You have to isolate your b. What do you need to do to isolate the b? You simply need to divide both sides by 6. That would give you b is equal to minus 5. All right, there we have it. b is equal to minus 5. That's our second equation. What do you think we do now? Well, we sub back into the a. So we say a is equal to minus b and minus 7. We now have b as a value of minus 5. So we sub 
minus 5 back into the B, making sure to put the minus 5 in brackets, and making sure that the negative on the left-hand side of the B stays outside of the brackets. So you say minus, open brackets, minus 5, and continue with the minus 7 on the right-hand side. So there you have it. I'm just doing it in red so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So you get that minus and the minus 5, minus 7. So the minus and minus cancel, making it 5 minus 7. And therefore, A is equal to minus 2. We now have our third equation, and we can sub back into the original. We've got A, we've got B, and now we pretty much have the full equation. So let's take f of x, when x is cubed plus ax squared. Wherever you see the A, you'll put a minus 2, and wherever you see a B, you'll put a minus 5. Let's do that. I just also want to show you in the previous answer, you actually need to do a number line. So because x is value which is less than or equal to 6, or less than or equal to 2, obviously if you go from 6 downwards, you pass 2 anyways. And because there's an equal sign, you circle this, the uh, dot and fill it in, making sure that it's filled in because of the equal sign. So there's just quickly a line showing you 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, tending to infinity. And as you can see, I've st started from the right. Right, now that you've got the A and the B from the previous question, you can write your final equation. Let's do question C now. For question C, we have x squared plus xy is equal to 24. This is quite a simple question. You basically need to factorize, group terms, and solve for x. Right, there we go. We've got another equation though. So we've got 3x minus y is equal to 4. Once again, we'll be doing simultaneous equations to solve for both x and y. So I've written here our first equation is that at the top. The second is that at the bottom. And I've so put a square box or a rectangular red box around the second equation. I'm thinking let's start with that one because you can easily isolate the y. So I've taken the y to the right and I've brought the 4 across changing sign as I jump over the equal sign. So we've got 3x minus 4 is equal to y. Why is it y? Because the minus y jumped across the equal sign and also changed sides. So now that we've got y is equal to 3x minus 4, I'm reading from the right, we can substitute 3x minus 4 into the y value above at, question, at the uh, first equation. So we've got x squared plus x now, always make sure that you put the substitution in a set of brackets. Now, instead of putting the y, we're going to put in brackets 3x minus 4. Let's close off our brackets and put our equal sign equaling 24. Now, as you can see, the only variables left over are x. So we've got x squared plus x open bracket 3x minus 4 in brackets is equal to 24. Let's calculate and expand those brackets. We say x times 3x is 3x squared, x times minus 4 is minus 4x. Bring the 24 to the left-hand side, making sure to change your sign from positive to negative. As you have it, you've got x squared plus 3x minus 4x minus 24 is equal to 0. We then group our terms. We see we've got 4x squared minus 4x minus 24. Let's simplify the system over here. We can see we've got a common factor of 4. Let's divide everything by 4. 0 divided by 4 is always going to be 0. And as you can see, we've got x squared minus x minus 6, because 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. Now let's factorize, put into two separate brackets. Factors of 6 are 3 and 2. We need to get minus 1x. What do you, how do you do it? You've got a minus 3 and a positive 2. There you have it. Cross method, x minus 3, x plus 2. Therefore, x is equal to 3, or x is equal to minus 2. What do we do next? Seeing that we've got the two x values, we now need to substitute back in for y. And there we have it. We have sub into 2. Let's say our equation is 3x minus y is equal to 4. We take our minus y to the right, changing it to a positive y, and our 4 to the left, changing it to a negative 4. But I'm just going to quickly substitute the x value in. I'm saying when x is equal to 3, we have 3 times 3 is 9. And we bring the 4 across, we have 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. And then the y jumps to the right-hand side. There we have it. When x is equal to 3, so the x-coordinate is 3, then the y-coordinate would be 5. Let's do our next one. So we say or 
And now we say when x is equal to, as we see there, minus 2, let's solve for the value of y. So as we can see, y is equal to 3x uh, sub in the minus 2 is mi like minus 4. So 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, minus 4 is minus 10. Therefore, when x is minus 2, y is minus 10. Now, moving forward, let's do question D. Here we need to find the roots of the equation. Here we have it. We have x, open bracket, x minus 1 over k. Close your bracket is equal to k, open bracket, x minus 1 over k. Close your brackets. Notice that you've got a common factor on the left and on the right called x minus 1 over k. So what you do is you just cancel or divide both sides by that factor and you're left with x is equal to k. All right, so let's move on now. In our second step, we say that x minus k, open brackets, x minus 1 over k, is equal to 0. We then solve, we then say x is equal to k, or x is equal to 1 over k. When you take the, when you isolate the right-hand bracket, you see that you've got x minus 1 over k is equal to 0. You take the minus 1 over k to the right, making it positive, and you say x is equal to 1 over k. That's how we did what we did to the right. Same thing for the left. Block the right-hand side, we have x minus k is equal to 0. We then take the minus k across, making it x is equal to positive k. Relatively simple. So now let's move on. Our second part of the question, we say that k is equal to 1. Why do we say that? Well, x is equal to 1 would substantiate the fact that you've got x minus 1 over 1. So when x is equal to k, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So there you have it, x is equal to 1 when k is equal to 1, or x is equal to 1 over 1 when k is equal to 1. You just need to look at the brackets above and substitute in accordingly. Now make sure to also place a plus or minus 1, because if you have minus, so you have 1 over minus 1, you'd have a positive. So you'd say minus 1 plus 1 would be 0. So the x would be minus 1, and then the k would also be minus 1, but the minus in front of the, the fraction would be cancelling out the negative in the denominator, making it minus 1 for the x, and then plus 1 over 1, and that would be equal to 0, wouldn't it? I've just subtracted and erased that previous question, so we can do a little bit of working. There we have it. As you can see very clearly, x is equal to 1, and we also know that x is equal to k. Look at the top of the screen. x is also equal to 1 over k. So if you sub x equal to 1, then you know that k is equal to 1. However, when you say 1 over k and you sub a 1 in, you've got 1 over 1, and therefore k is equal to 1. So we say that k is equal to plus or minus 1. There we go. Those are our real roots for this particular question. Easy game.